good evening. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Pastor Shaquila, and we are with New Life in the City. Thank you for tuning in to us this evening. We're so happy to have you with us. This evening, we're just so blessed because we are, we started this series on Love Is coming from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. So we're going to be continuing that tonight. Um, I'm going to ask you, first of all, if you would share this, share it on your page and, and let's get the word of God out there. Let's spread it out to as many as possible. Um, I'm, I've been very excited and have been learning a lot on this Love Is series. So tonight we want to continue in that. And so I bring before you none other than Deacon, Deacon, I'm sorry, Jonathan McKnight, who is going to be ministering on Love is Kind. Amen. God bless you. Please enjoy this pre-recorded message. Amen. Bless the Lord. Good evening, family and friends. This is Deacon Jonathan McKnight here again. Uh, Coming to you tonight for another installment of our Love Is series. I want to start out by thanking our pastors for giving me another opportunity to come before you tonight. I want to thank my family and friends who are watching for the continued support that they show to me. Um, the title of tonight's message is Love Is Kind. Um, we're going to answer three questions tonight. The first question is, am I kind? The second question is, what have I done to be kind lately? And the third question is, how can I be more kind? Before we start, we're gonna go ahead and pray in. Father God, I come to you tonight, Father God, asking you forgive me for all my sins that I've committed against you in thought and in deed. Lord God, I thank you for allowing me to have another opportunity to come before your people, Lord God, to minister your word. Lord God, I ask that you just allow this word to be all of you, Lord God, none of me, Lord God. Use me an instrument of your praise, Lord God. Let me be the tip of your pen, Lord God. So, Lord God, I ask that you just continue to bless us, Lord God. Continue to bless us in this season, Lord God. Allow us to be kind to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. So, in 1 Corinthians 13, 14, the Bible says, Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. We have gotten into a more technological society where we want to screen everything. And it's nothing wrong with that, but doing things just to get more likes, it won't get you anywhere. It's what people do when the cameras are not on that really counts. So, Ask yourself, are you kind? Are you kind to those around when no one else is looking? Or do you need the camera on for you to get live and, you know, be that kind person? So most of you know that I am a bail bond agent, um, among other things. Uh, when I first got into the business, I was working under someone whose responsibility was to train me. To make a long story short, once I finished my internship, I had a mentality that if I'm kind to these people, they'll eat me alive. I used to pray, please God help me catch these people without having to pull a gun or run behind these guys. I didn't like doing that. Once I would get them in custody, if they made me run, I'm not talking to them. You're not going to the bathroom. You're going straight to jail and it may be a bumpy ride. Please God forgive me. But, you know, that's just how it was. I wouldn't have any sympathy on them because I was taught, hey, you know, as soon as you be nice to them, that's when they'll take advantage of you and use that as a weakness. So basically to protect yourself, you have to be mean. That's what I was taught. So, you know, one day I had to pick up a guy and looking at him, I knew I was going to have to run after the guy. I'm like, oh God, please, you know, let me just catch him real quick so I don't have to run. But, you know, looking at him, I said, you know, I may have to run after him and I most likely will probably have to fight this guy. And so 
you know, I couldn't catch this guy for over a month. Over a month, I, you know, was looking for him. I was sitting on his block, you know, early in the morning, and then I'd come back late at night, and I could not catch him. I got a call um, at some point from someone saying that, you know, he should be home. And so I started talking to his neighbors and they said, yeah, you know, if you really want to, of course, they didn't know what I was there for. And so they said, you know, he's usually out of here, you know, on Sunday mornings to go to church. And I was like, oh, okay. So, I, you know, in my mind, I'm like, you know, I'll wait for him and I will pick him up and, you know, take him to jail. He's going to miss church that day. And so I eventually caught up to him. And when I caught up to the guy, we started talking because, you know, I kind of let my guard down a little bit because, you know, he didn't make me fight or anything or didn't make me run. So I said, you know what? Yeah, I'll be nice to the guy. And so I started talking to him. It was generic stuff. And he started telling me that um, he's supposed to be ministering at church today or that day. And for a second there, he got me and I was like, oh yeah, I've heard stories like this, but never that one. I've, I've heard other stories, but that was, that was a good one. And you know, I was missing church that day to pick him up and take him to jail because that was the only day that I could, you know, find him. So that kind of pulled the screen. And uh, we're talking and I eventually, I eventually give up and I say, you know what, okay. I know where he is. I know he goes to church. So if he, you know, does not, if he does not comply next time, I am going to, or if I can't find him next time, I am going to just pick him up at church because he also showed me his, uh, his card from his church. So I figured, you know, I'll pick him up at church and, you know, just because he put me through this, of course it was wrong, but that's where I was at the moment. And um, at the same time, you know, I was living, you know, paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. It was worse than paycheck to paycheck, but you know, I was kind of broke at the time. And you know, money, because that was basically my only uh, source of income at the time, money was very tight. And you know, here I am, you know, I, I, I think I, I was standing to make $1,000 just from picking him up that one, you know, that assignment. And here I am, I have the guy in my custody. He's already in cuffs. I can literally take him to jail and pick up my check, you know, the very next day. Knowing that, of course, you know, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, I decided to let this guy go. The money was basically in my hands and, you know, I had to take a chance on him because of what he was telling me. And so, you know, we're in Paul's right there. And Galatians 6, 9, the Bible says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. If we do not give up, the Bible is telling us not to worry about doing good sometimes or what you perceive as doing good. If you do good, when you least suspect that God will bless you equally. And so, of course, at the time, you know, this is something I figured out afterwards. At the time, that's not what I was thinking. At the time, I was thinking, you know what, I can't do this to this guy. You know, I, I, that's just being mean. You know, he's telling me he's going to church and he did have on, you know, uh, a dress attire. So I gave him the benefit of doubt. So I took a chance. And again, you know, I figured if he didn't show up, I would pick him up at church and, you know, we'll do that. And so I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. And so sometimes we think that that voice in our head is the enemy telling me, hey, you know, let this guy go. You know, I, I, I want you to stay broke. So let him go so you can't get that money right there to pay some bills. If you have a relationship with God, you should know that that voice that you hear in your head is of him and not of anyone else. And so, you know, I don't always follow that voice. Sometimes I do slip up and I, you know, follow the other voice that I hear. But again, if you have that relationship with God, it's easy to distinguish. So now going back to the beginning of the questions that I asked, what have you done to be kind lately? 
that you pray for that person that asked for prayer when they told you they were going through something? Did you talk to that person when they were going through something? You know that that person is going through something alone. They have no one to talk to. And, you know, you, you may be better off than they are. But have you talked to that person? So, to make a long story short, you know, I'm at church. And I did end up going to church that day because I had no reason not to go. So I'm on my way home and I'm like, you know, I'm looking at my clock and this guy has not called me back yet. And so, you know, I gave up on it. About an hour later, I get a call and saying, hey, you know, um, my wife is going to take me to the jail. And before I even finish uh, reading the text message, I'm like, okay, you know what? Now I have to prepare to go get this guy next week. Um, but of course, I read the rest of the text message. It says, you know, can you meet me there? And then he also asked me, you know, can you post a new bond for me? So I went ahead and I posted a new bond for him. So, you know, instead of me making a $1,000 um, for just picking him up, I made that $1,000 plus another $100, you know, just for boasting his new bond, which I did not have a problem with because I knew where he lived. I knew where he went to church and, you know, he surrendered without giving me a fight. Because I was kind to him, the following day, God blessed me three times as much as I was going to make just on that first day. For me following his word and, you know, listening to him, allowing this man of God to go to church and preach his word, God blessed me exceedingly the next day. And so, you know, when you're kind, God will bless you. So, we know that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were the kindest people in the Bible. But today we are going to talk about Ruth. And so just a backstory on Ruth for those that do not know. She was a widower who basically lost everything, moved to a different land with her mother-in-law. So instead of going to back home to her land, she went to a new land with her mother-in-law. In chapter one of Ruth, it talks about how kind Ruth was. After Naomi, who was Ruth's mother-in-law, lost her husband and two sons, one of which who was Ruth's husband, she was left with her daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Oprah. They knew they needed to leave the land because there was no food where they currently were. On the way to their destination, and they only told them to go back to their mothers, go back to their lands where they are from. Oprah basically bounced. She went back to her, you know, her land with her mother. But Ruth decided to stay with her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law was an older woman. She was not able to bear any kids. And, you know, because she was old, she needed some type of assistance to basically live. Um, you know, she lost both of her sons. You know, Oprah was gone. She had no one else moving to a new land to try and survive. Ruth basically told Naomi, I will die where you die. She said a whole bunch of other stuff, basically saying she's not going to leave her. But the most important thing that I read there is I will die where you die. She's basically saying no matter where you go, I am going with you. If that's not kindness, I don't know what is. But that's the kind of woman Ruth was. Mind you, she had nothing to gain. You know, Naomi even asked Ruth, why are you staying? I can't give you any more sons for you to marry. And even if I could, would you turn down other marriages while these, you know, baby boys grow up to an age where you can marry them? She simply said, I'm not leaving you. One morning, Ruth went out to gather grain. While out, there was a man named Boaz. He definitely recognized her. He even asked the foreman, who's that? And the foreman told him she was the woman who came with Naomi from the other land and he kind of gave her, gave him the backstory. Boaz then approaches Ruth. And so in Ruth 2.8, it reads, Boaz went over and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, Stay right here with us when you gather grain. 
Don't go to the other field. Stay right behind the young women working in my field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asks, am I only a foreigner or I am only a foreigner? Boaz replied, yes, I know, but I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother in your own land to live among strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. So that act of kindness that Ruth showed towards Naomi, it's already paying off. She's coming here and now you have this man, this stranger who you don't even know. He's basically looking out for you already. He's telling you, hey, listen, you know, I already told the people that you, you were me, you know, you don't have to worry about them. You follow what my girls are doing right now. They're in the area where there's full, plenty of grain, so you don't have to worry about that. And when you're thirsty, you drink from my water. That's not kindness shown unto other kindness. I mean, what is? And remember, with her kindness that she showed towards Naomi, she had nothing to gain. She was literally just being kind. But one day, Naomi told Ruth, it's time for you to move out and marry someone who can provide and take care of you. And so Naomi suggested Boaz. And so in Ruth 3.3, 3, it reads, Now do as I tell you. Take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor. But don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down there. He will then tell you what to do. Ruth replied, I will do everything you say. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of Naomi, her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he laid down at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? He asked. Of course, you know, it's midnight, it's dark, he can't see, he just knows that there's a woman at his feet. And, you know, of course, he went to sleep at mid he went to sleep and then he wakes up at midnight. He's not expecting anybody at his feet. You know, he probably kicked her in the face. You know, he's trying to scratch and here's this woman at his feet. But Ruth replies, I am your servant, Ruth. Spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. In verse 10, Boaz says, the Lord bless you, my daughter. You are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before. For you not have gone after a younger man, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. Verse 12, it reads, but while it's true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight and in the morning I'll talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you, very well. Let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now lie down here until the morning. So Boaz went and talked to the other man. That man could not redeem Ruth because that would endanger his own family's lineage. So it was up to Boaz. Boaz told everyone to make sure that they knew Ruth was going to be his wife. In Ruth 4.10, Boaz tells the elders and the crowds of people, 
you are witnesses today that I have bought from Naomi all the property of her husband and two sons. And with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite wife from Malon, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. So that again, that act of kindness that Ruth did by not going home to her family and her land allowed Naomi's family to be redeemed and in turn allowed Na um, Ruth to be redeemed. We don't always look at what a good deed can do. When you're kind, that does not get unnoticed. It may seem unimportant at the moment, but just wait until you receive your blessing. You know, if you go out and you do something, God's going to bless you. It doesn't need to be, you know, on live. It doesn't need to be announced to anyone. I can go out right now and, you know, I've done it plenty of times where, you know, I may only have a dollar in the car and I give that dollar to someone. I eventually get blessed, you know, tenfold and I'm okay with that. I get blessed a hundredfold. It's happened. I'm okay with that. But, you know, that's just how kindness works. It doesn't need to be advertised. But to close out, our final question is, how can I be more kind? Being kind is always about giving. Now, I'm just going to repeat that. Being kind is always about giving. You have to give something to be kind. But it's not always about giving something materialistic. A hug to those in need. That's being kind. A prayer, a phone call, a text message, even a thought. If you know somebody's going through them, just thinking about their circumstances and praying about it, that's being kind. You'll be surprised how far a kind gesture goes to someone down the road. You know, if I'm going through something and I get a text message from someone, that puts a smile on my face. That shows kindness. When you're kind, God will definitely favor you. You can be down on your luck and just, you know, being kind turns your, your, your situation into a praise break, a praise story that you can tell other people about. Um, you know, I, I, I always try to be kind and, um, and I'll give you an example of something I did recently and it cost me nothing, but there's a twist at the end. I, I had gone to Dunkin' Donuts and you know, while in line, there was a homeless guy standing over to the side and all he wanted, he didn't want money. He wanted a cup of ice cold water. That's all he wanted, which is free. Of course, they're not going to give it to him because he's not a paying customer. So I went to the, you know, the drive through got my coffee and I got him a large cup of water. Unfortunately, when they gave me the large cup of water, it was just a large cup of ice. And so, of course, where this gentleman was standing, there was a uh, water or water hose. He could have simply turned the water on. But my act of kindness that I showed to him, he decided to take the cup of ice and throw it down on the ground and says, what am I going to do with this? I told you I wanted a cup of ice cold water. And he walked away. And for a second there, you know, I started to say something back to him, like, you know, you ungrateful Philistine, but of course I didn't say anything. Um, but I did think, and you know, when you think, you know, it's better than saying stuff at time. What, sh what you show unto others will be shown unto you. Because I showed him kindness, you know, I'm going to get kindness back. He did not show me kindness. He basically spat in my face, you know, threw the cup down because he did not get everything he wanted. Whereas he could have taken the ice. He could have even asked me, hey, you know, could you ask him to put water in it or something like that? And I probably would have done it. But when you see things like that, when you see people down on their luck, on their luck, and they, you know, he's basically just given up on kindness because he, you know, he may most likely has not been shown a lot of kindness. 
but that's not up to me to decide. The only person that I'm accountable for is myself. As long as I do what I have to do and I show my acts of kindness to others, I know God will bless me. So again, you know, what can we do to be more kind? Pray for people, call, text. You know, if you know someone's out on their luck and you can spare a few bucks, why not bless them? If not, hey, a text, hey, I'm praying for you. I know what you're going through. I've never been through it before, but I'm praying for you. The only, to the only person who can help you right now. That's enough. You'd be surprised. Once you pray for them, that shows them that you really care. And that's the best act of kindness that you can show, showing someone that you care. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to come before you another night, Lord God. We know that there are plenty of people who did not make it throughout the day, who are in a hospital bed, who are no longer alive. Lord God, we thank you for your acts of kindness that you have shown to us. Even though there are times where we don't deserve being kind to, you continue to be kind to us. Lord God, I thank you for continuing to be kind for our church. Lord God, we've been serving you for 10 years, and for 10 years, we've been shown nothing but kindness. Lord God, I know that there are times where we got tested, Lord God, but we continue to be kind unto others. We continue to be kind unto your people, Lord God, for that's what you called us to be. Lord God, I thank you for the kindness that you've shown me in my life and my family, Lord God, when I was down and out, Lord God, and still showing kindness to, uh, to other people who may not have even deserve, deserved it, Lord God, you continue to show me kindness. Lord God, I ask that you just continue to watch over our members, Lord God, continue to bless them, Lord God, exceedingly, Lord God. I ask that you just watch over their health, Lord God. Watch over them mentally, physically, financially, Lord God. Lord God, I don't know what everyone is going through, Lord God, but I know that there are those who are sending up a prayer, Lord God, asking for something in particular, Lord God. Lord God, speak to them. Allow them to see what they need to do for you to continue and follow through on your word. So, Lord God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night.